Did you know that the F car is modeled after the FNS car automatic rifle, specifically the S car H variant, or that the AKM is based on the Russian AK 74M, the successor to the iconic AK 47? After receiving so many requests from the community to help them decide which gun is best at the moment and seeing that no video had been done on the topic since the beginning of season 1, today we will do our best to determine which of the famous FCAR or the AKM is the gun to add to your loadout. Remember, at the end of the day, you should pick the gun that makes most sense to you. What you're about to see is only there to help you make your decision. Let's jump in the video. Overview and Comparison Let's kick things off by taking a closer look at the FCAR. Also known as the Fast Combat Assault Rifle, this versatile weapon is found exclusively on the medium build. It is offering players a balanced performance in various combat scenarios, with a moderate damage output of 22 per shot and a fast firing time of 2.6 seconds, the FCAR is considered as one of the heavy hitters going up to 211 DPS. On top of that, its manageable recoil makes it an easy go-to weapon for players with proper aim and tracking. As you can see, I have prepared a table detailing all the specs of the weapon. I will not run through all of them to keep things simple, but I will leave a link to the sheet in the description of the video if you wish to look at it into more details. Now, let's turn our attention to the AKM, or Automatic Kalashnikov Modernized. This fully automatic assault rifle is a force to be reckoned with. While it may deal slightly lower damage per shot compared to the FCAR, its larger magazine size of 36 rounds and slightly faster firing time of 3.5 seconds make it a formidable opponent in any close to medium firefight. So, how do these two staples of our favorite games stack up against each other? The FCAR shines with its high damage output and precision shooting, making it ideal for medium to long range engagements. On the other hand, the AKM's larger magazine side and faster fire rate give it the upper hand in sustained firefights and close quarter combats. Considering the current heavy heavy medium meta, the fact that most sustained fights are mostly close or mid-range fights and the extra available ammo on the AKM, my personal opinion is that the AKM takes back the lead on the FCAR at least for now. That being said, Consider that you will have to play with an iron sights on the AKM, meaning that while the FCAR is less efficient than the AKM in close quarters, it still packs a punch in that scenario. On the opposite side, the iron sights of the AKM make it practically impossible to be consistent at high distance. Let's take a couple of examples. Considering what we know about the two guns, I will now try to give you a reliable scenario for both weapons where you can estimate that the gun is the best choice out of the two. Let's start with the FCAR. The FCAR is a great choice for medium-medium heavy scenario on a map like Cis Horizon. The fact that the gun wields a holographic sight with consistency at high distance will give you an edge on those outside fights. On the other side, the low amount of bullets per clip means that you will have to spend a considerable amount of time reloading, which doesn't combo very well with spending time on the healing beam, hence the need for a second medium. The gun itself, boasting a higher DPS than the AKM overall, means that you will be more of a DPS than a support and would therefore combo quite well with a flanker specialization like the dematerializer rather than the healing beam. On the other side, with the AKM, maps like Monaco or Skyway with a lot of indoor fights should be your indicator to pick this weapon. A double heavy medium team would also be much more suitable in terms of team composition. Your gun will pop off in close quarter situations. The rest of the time, you can rely on your two heavies to do the bulk of the damage while you are playing the role of the annoying nurse that asks if you took your pills every three minutes. One clip is sufficient to take down a heavy if you're aiming somewhat properly, so spend your time healing your heavies and if you spot an opportunity because a heavy has pushed too far too fast, jump in and make that easy kill. Pros and Cons Analysis Now, let's delve deeper in the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon. The FCAR's high damage and precision shooting make it a force to be reckoned with in the right hands. 
Whether you're picking off enemies from a distance or holding down a key position, the FCAR is a reliable ally in any encounter because its damage per shot and critical shot are usually strong enough to act as a deterrent. The enemy will be alarmed from the first damage received and with the right strategy and reactive team can be the crack in the defenses of the enemy team that you use to push and close the kill. However, the FCAR isn't without its flaws. Its smaller magazine size and slightly slower fire rate can leave you vulnerable in close quarter combat, especially when facing multiple opponents. In these situations, you'll need to rely on quick thinking and precise shooting to come out on top. Strafing will not be enough. You will need to master sliding jukes and usually also the jumping pad mechanics to survive a close-up fight with two heavies. Meanwhile, the AKM boasts a larger magazine side and faster fire rate, making it a formidable opponent in sustained combat. We all know this and have been subject to it countless times, but the relentless hit markers you get when under fire from the AKM also has a demoralizing power that will usually force the enemy to back down, take cover or outright leave the fight. Whether you're laying down suppressing fire or engaging enemies up close, the AKM's versatility is unmatched in the medium assault rifle class. That being said, the AKM's lower damage output and stronger recoil can make it a challenge to control, especially in the hands of less experienced players. Plus, its longer reload time and less accurate iron sights can be a liability in fast-paced combat situations, especially in higher ranks where players know how to dodge and use the entire extent of movement mechanics that the game has to offer. Change history of the weapons. No matter what, those two guns have always been the community's favorites and weapons of choice. But before we wrap things up, let's take a trip down memory lane and explore the evolution of the FCAR and the AKM in the finals. From damage adjustments to recoil tweaks, these weapons have had their fair share of changes since the release of the game. As you can see, the FCAR was considered too strong straight off the bat. Only a month in Season 1, the first damage drop came in for the weapon. This was done to be less effective against turrets, which were used a lot at the time since a full clip would bring the turret down to 1 HP. Starting at Season 2, we saw Embar tackle the issue of the FCAR because most players were simply forced to choose the weapon if they wanted to stay competitive. Over the space of barely a couple of weeks, they not only nerfed the entire recoil pattern to make it less predictable, but nerfed the damage falloff from 67 down to 50%, making it one of the weakest weapons in the game at high distance. Finally, at least for now, well past the half of Season 2, Embark came back on its steps and re-increased the damage falloff from 50 to 55%, but that was linked to a very strong nerf of the damage per shot from 25 to 22 even though the max size was increased from 20 to 25. For the AKM, we followed a similar path, but a little less strict. The recall pattern was modified right at the launch of the game in Season 1, meaning that except for players who had played on the Alpha or Beta phase, the change was not even realized by most. This was then adjusted for the better in patch 1.4, since then, the only real change done to the AKM was at the release of Season 2, where Embark basically rendered the gun extremely difficult to use at high distance. What to expect for the future? While it is difficult to predict meta changes and therefore give you an exact estimate of how things will play off for Season 3, I can at least try to give you pointers to help you make your decision when building your loadouts. Firstly, there seems to be a new motion from Embark to reduce the efficiency of heavies and bring their ultimate crown off of their heads for the first time since the release of the finals. You can see that through different means like the introduction of glitch canisters, the repeated buffs of melee weapons and the increased complexity in gadget combos between heavies and support medium, as was seen a few weeks back with the size increase of the barricades coupled with the recent nerfs of the APS turret. All in all, there is already seemingly a switch being operated and we are recently seeing more and more light classes being incorporated to team structures in every tier of the rank ladder. Considering that, the FCAR has a strong chance with its current 25 bullets and higher damage per shot to take back its crown from the AKM and once again lead the charge for the medium class. That being said, there is also a high chance that a new automatic or semi-automatic weapon will once again be added on the medium class for the next season. 
Considering Embark's mistake of releasing underwhelming weapons for Season 2, they will surely this time do the opposite and add weapons that should shake the meta. If that is true, there is a high probability that the choice will not be limited to those two weapons. So as you can see, both guns complement each other and the best answer to FCAR or AKM is it depends where and how you're going to use it. Remember to always include your team as a whole in your approach to maximize your efficiency and facilitate victories as best you can. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We've only cashed out $584 so far and we're going to need a hell of a lot more if we want to ensure consistent victory. So if you want to support me, eradicate the like button and subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video and the last thing that remains to be said is that I will see you on the next one.